Welcome back to another Witcher lore video. I've decided to make today's character lore video on a character that has interested me ever since his introduction in the Witcher 3 DLC Blood and Wine. Honestly, this character has interested me so much. I love their story arc. I can never decide what to do at the end of Blood and Wine with this character. I generally go for the good ending, but I just, it's a difficult one because I really like this character. I think it's very unfair what their fate is in the good ending. So, this character is, of course, Detlaf. Or, as some of you may know him, the Beast of Beauclair. As always, I will begin today's video by discussing some basic information on this character, then I'll move on to this character's history before the games, and I will lightly go over the events surrounding him during the games, as I feel like a lot of you will have played the games and will know exactly what happens because you've experienced it. And then I'll also read his journal entry, and then go over some trivia. I'm also going to do a light segment about his character as a whole, his personality, etc. So as I said, let's begin with some basic information. Detlaf is a higher vampire who, like every higher vampire, possesses unique abilities. Currently we are unsure as to what his unique abilities are, but it is possible that the monster form he has may be one of them, as we see no other higher vampires in the game take that form. We do see a higher vampire in The Witcher 3 take a, a monster-esque form, but it's just, a, I believe it's an Ekimara or something like that, I'm not quite sure, but it's different. Detlaf's higher vampire form may be completely unique, possibly, we've never seen Regis do it, and we've never been given any indication that he can do that, so that could be his possible unique ability. He is also responsible for the regeneration of Regis, he did this by feeding Regis his blood and nursing him back to health. Due to this act of kindness, Regis is currently, at least, well, at the start of the games, indebted to Detla, and I will get into that more later in the video. He also had a one-time partner called Sayana that he met in Nazir. So now for his history. Not much is known about this character prior to his meeting with Regis, par one event, and this is an event that Regis actually tells you, the player, about. And this is a story in which Detlaf shows compassion to a human, but also shows how he has quite a quick temper. In Assumedly Lyria, in the year 964, and actually a quick fact, this was only 10 years after the creation of Witcher, so this was a very long time ago, Detlaf encountered a boy who, for no other reason than kindness, offered Detlaf an apple expecting nothing in return. Eventually, however, this boy was slain by a fiend, who was known as the Brute of Lyria. Hearing of this, Detlaf became so enraged that he killed the fiend, and in the process, gave the corpse of the fiend and a dagger to a local hunter, therefore creating a legend and avenging the fallen boy. It's said that he actually flew into a rage and killed the creature, so he's very, very quick-tempered and emotional, even more so than, say, most humans. Anyway, now we skip much further into the future, and this is the next event we know of Detlaf's life before the games. So Detlaf meets a woman, who he becomes infatuated with. This woman is of course Sayana. She helps him find a place in the world, and helps him to exist in human society, and also, he completes her every desire. They basically, he loves her and she acts as if she absolutely loves him. But one day, she actually disappears, just out of nowhere. Regis states to Geralt that he doesn't know why she left and Detlaf never told, but he assumes that potentially Detlaf flew into a rage, as he is very emotional, and showed her his more monstrous side. Anyway, time to fast forward again. Detlaf encounters a vampire, known as Regis, who had been all but destroyed by a a powerful human sorcerer known as Vilgefortz. So after stumbling upon the fallen vampire, Detlaf took it upon himself to revive him. He spent years feeding Regis his blood and nursing him back to health. After Detlaf restored the vampire, at least partially, I believe in Blood and Wine Regis isn't actually fully restored, but he's getting there. Regis became indebted to him, until, I imagine, Detlaf most likely releases him. But I feel like it's almost not even that, it's that Regis just has such a strong connection with Detlaf, it's stronger than having a family member, he literally lives off Detlaf's blood. So a bit of time after reviving Regis, Detlaf receives a letter, that if he doesn't travel to Beauclair and kill five humans in three days, his lovely Sayana will will be sent to him piece by piece. Detlaf begins the killing, at which point the Witcher Geralt of Rivia is paid to stop the killings. So that's basically where the DLC starts, and if you've played the games you'll know exactly what happens after that, so I'm going to give you a very very brief outline of what occurs during the games from Detlaf's point of view, and also obviously from Regis and Geralt's point of view, but mainly I'm going to try and do it from his point of view. Detlaf encounters Geralt, and just as he's about to kill him, is stopped by Regis who, after having not seen his friend for some time, offers to help him. Detlaf flees. Detlaf continues with his task, whilst Geralt and Regis discover why Detlaf is killing humans. They went to where he was currently living and found the letter he was sent. Detlaf returns to his makeshift home in an abandoned toy shop to discover his friend Regis waiting for him. Regis then explains that he and Geralt understand his situation and wish to help him. 
So after deciding to have a proper meeting about this, Regis, Geralt and Detlaf meet at Oriana's residence, where they decide to assault Duntine, which is where they find out Sayana is being held. So after easily killing a company of Naziri mercenaries, they discovered that Sayana had used him and betrayed him. He flew into a rage and threatened war on Tucson unless she explained everything. Detlaf of course makes good in his threat which causes Regis and Geralt to take action. So there are a few ways that this can work now. This is where the choices come in much more. They either find his lover or visit the Unseen Elder, forcing Detlaf to meet them in Tesha Mutena. So either way they meet him in Tesha Mutena, but the outcome of that depends on what you choose. So there are a few possibilities here. Detlaf kills Sayana and leaves. Detlaf kills Sayana and is killed by Regis. Detlaf doesn't kill Sayana and is killed by Regis because you can either bring Sayana and she disappears by using the ribbon, or you can not bring Sayana and he flies into a rage and then Geralt has to take him down and then Regis fully finishes him off. And that is the end of Detlaf's story either way, whether he lives or dies, nothing else is said of him. So I hope that story was all interesting to you guys. I'm sure a lot of you might not know the events before Blood and Wine. It is said in the game but very, very light. You have to listen to every little thing, do every little detail. It may just be nice for you guys just to brush up on this. So there you go, a bit more information about Detlef. And now I'm going to go over his character, just him as a person, or I suppose you could say as a vampire. Detlef, at least in comparison to most vampires, is considered to be incredibly mature, finding the actions of Regis and the other higher vampires to be extremely childish. For example, he doesn't drink blood, but Oriana is practically addicted to it, and Regis at one time was addicted to it, but I believe he kind of went off that after a while and tried to sort of suppress it a bit. He would only drink blood if absolutely necessary, and the only time you see him drink blood in the games is when he's in his monstrous form, and this is only when he's trying to kill Geralt. A strange fact about him, he actually preferred to live among the lesser vampires, rather than the higher vampires or humans. I imagine it's because he doesn't like the idea of having other people having the capacity to judge him, because <laughs> he is very emotional as I said. Detlaf is, however, despite his maturity, quite naive, and doesn't fully understand that humans can lie and deceive. As generally, vampires are pretty truthful about things, I'd say, at least when they haven't been influenced by humans, and they don't try and hide anything from their species, or they either have one way or another about them. And he is also incredibly short-tempered, as I said earlier, and this is shown in the games. So now I'm going to read his journal entry, which I'm sure a lot of you will find interesting. Bear in mind, guys, this is a very, very long journal entry, so be sure to strap in. And if you want to skip past it, just be sure to find the point in the video where you can skip past it. Maybe someone in the comments will put it down. Milton's murderer was very swift. Even with years of witchering under his belt, Geralt could barely keep up with him. It became clear that the killer was as clever as he was fast, by entering an old warehouse where he set a trap for Geralt. In this way, Geralt had his first face-to-face -face encounter with the Beast of Beauclair, and discovered it was a higher vampire named Detlaf. A fight immediately ensued, which might have ended badly for the Witcher had he not been saved in the nick of time by an old friend, Regis, who put a stop to their battle. And after that, Detlaf fled away in a puff of fog. When Geralt went to Oriana's residence with the Duchess, he was certain Detlaf was somewhere far away, safe from Regis' care. He was wrong. As he found out while watching both vampires stroll into her room, his surprise quickly turned to irritation. In the conversation which followed, the Duchess had no idea she was talking to the murderer she so wished to have slain. In fact, the Beast of Beauclair even came off as charming. Afterwards, Geralt set off for Duntine, not before first extracting a promise from Regis to keep Detlaf at a safe distance this time. At Duntine, Geralt was dragged into a fight against bandits, with considerably superior forces at their disposal. There's no knowing how this might have ended had the proverbial cavalry not ridden to his rescue. Birds in service of Geralt's vampire friends have been following him the whole time. Thanks to them, right at the battle's pivotal moment, Detlaf and Regis appeared to fight at his side. Believing he was battling the men responsible for his beloved's kidnapping, Detlaf killed with an unseen passion. He only stopped when there was not a being left on the battlefield, giving out the least sign of life. Upon learning that the woman he loved was using him for her own ends, Detlaf lost all will to keep on living. The only thing left to him was a longing for vengeance. Blind, unrestrained vengeance. Detlaf issued a clear ultimatum. Sayana was to meet with him alone and explain everything. If she failed to do that, Beauclair would be awash with blood. No one had any doubts Detlaf meant exactly what he said. If Geralt visits the Unseen Elder, Geralt and Regis arrive at the meeting with Detlaf but without Sayana. As predicted, Detlaf flew into a rage. This time, however, Geralt was ready for him and stood to fight. After an exhausting battle, Detlaf had been defeated. Yet no man can truly kill a higher vampire. That takes another higher vampire. As he died, Detlaf harboured no hard feelings for Regis, knowing death was his best option, there no longer being anything in this world he wished to live for. If Geralt brings Sayana and gave her the ribbon, Regis and Geralt brought Sayana to Detlaf. Clearly not having grown, one iota less enraged with Sayana, Detlaf lashed out at her with his razor-sharp claws, hoping to rip her to shreds. She was saved, 
However, by a magic ribbon taken from the Land of a Thousand Fables, which transported her to a safe place in the nick of time. Detlaf, more furious than ever, attacked Regis and Geralt. In the fight that ensued, Detlaf was defeated. Yet no man can kill a higher vampire, that can only be done by another of its own kind. As he died, Detlaf harboured no hard feelings for Regis, knowing this was the best option for him. There was no longer anything in this world he wished to live for. If Geralt brings Sana and didn't get the ribbon and let Detlaf go, Regis and Geralt brought Sana to Detlaf, and the vampire murdered her without blinking an eye. Geralt understood the vampire's pain and did not hinder him in his vengeance. Detlaf appreciated the witch's neutrality and stayed he had no more quarrel with him. He also had no reason to stay in Beauclair and decided to leave. As his friend, Regis decided to go after him. He knew Detlaf would need him now more than ever. If Geralt brings Sayana and didn't get the ribbon but did attack Detlaf, Regis and Geralt brought Sayana to Detlaf. The vampire then murdered her without blinking an eye. Geralt attacked him, and a final fight took place in which Detlaf was defeated. Yet no man can truly kill a higher vampire. That takes another higher vampire. As he died, Detlaf harboured no hard feelings for Regis, knowing death was his best option. There no longer being anything in this world he wished for. Obviously, a lot of that is repeated, guys, because it's a journal entry and they like to follow the same pattern. And I've got to say, guys, that a lot of that basically follows what I told you on the history. So just to clarify, I realised that as I said it earlier, it might not have been apparent, but when I said that Geralt, Detlaf and Regis went to Oriana's and met up, it was more of an accidental meetup that ended with them all going to try and find Sayana. It wasn't exactly planned, at least on Geralt's side. Finally, to end today's video, a little bit of trivia. Detlaf van der Eretijn has the surname of Marta Detlaf, a concept artist at CD Projekt Red. Detlaf is voiced by the same actor who voiced Galels in the base game. Also, something else that I did actually have in my notes, but I forgot to mention at the start of the video, which I'll do now, Detlaf's full name is Detlaf van der Eretijn. So anyway, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. I imagine this will be a little bit of a longer one, but I hope you've all enjoyed it all the same. As always, be sure to go and follow my Twitter as updates go on there automatically. I'll do polls on there. If I ever do Q&As, AMAs, anything like that, they'll all be on there. Then you might be able to get your Twitter and the video, stuff like that. Be sure to follow my Twitch. I plan to play some games on there soon. I've already played quite a bit of games on there with you guys, but maybe some story games. That could be quite fun for us just to do for fun. So be sure to go and follow my Twitch. As always, the links for everything I talk about in these outros are down in the description, so they're really easy to find. Be sure to join the Discord. We now have over 300 members on there, and there's daily chats going on every day. It's not too heavy. You can always get a word in, you can always do a conversation. Whenever you join, people are very kind and they greet you, so be sure to join that. And also, as always, a big, big thank to the Patreon pledges. I got two more recently that I haven't actually been able to mention because I recorded the videos as they donated, so I've had to add another page to the Patreon pledges. I think I may have to either shorten down how long the Patreons appear on screen, or maybe up it from a dollar to something else to get your name at the end of the video, as it's going to get very long. <laughs> but yeah, you guys are all amazing. I I I'm serious, like, it's so awesome that you guys do this. When I get the Patreon money that comes through, I'm going to try and save it, and possibly either get a new chair, as the chair I've got currently is very very terrible and I find it difficult to record with it or I may even try and get a PlayStation 4 or maybe even Nintendo Switch and try and stream that record things on that like Bloodborne, Uncharted, loads and loads of cool games I want to play for you guys. So anyway, thank you all so much. I'll see you all later. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Everything that I've talked about in the outro has a link in the description. Be sure to put your video suggestions down below. And thank you all so much. Have an awesome rest of the week, guys. Also, if you haven't played The Witcher 1 and are really interested in The Witcher story before The Witcher 3, be sure to watch my Witcher 1 playthrough. As I'm pretty much doing everything in that, but I cut bits out that are kind of drag a bit, so it's not exactly boring to watch. So thank you all. So be sure to go and watch that. Goodbye, guys. See you later.